Our first lesson is Wonders of the Living World. What is meant by the environment? That is our surrounding, including us. It can be a town environment full of buildings, or else a village environment filled with trees. Now let's learn about microorganisms. Microorganisms are living things that are too small to be seen with the naked eye. They are normally viewed using a microscope. Bacteria, viruses, and some molds are examples of microorganisms. Most microorganisms are essential to life on Earth. However, some of them are harmful to humans, animals, and plants and can cause disease. Instruments used in observing microorganisms are light microscope, compound microscope, electron microscope. Where we can find microorganisms? Air, soil, rotten food, on the skin, water. So we can divide organisms into three main groups. They are plants, animals, and microorganisms. Next, let's learn about the characteristics of organisms. They are growth, reproduction, movements, respiration, and nutrition. What is growth? It is the increase in size, height, or amount of an organism. A puppy grows to a big dog. A book never grow. Always the same size. We call the things that grow as living things. And we call the things that do not grow as non living things. Next, we'll talk about nutrition. It is the satisfying the food requirements of organisms. According to the mode of nutrition, we can classify organisms as autotrophic organisms and heterotrophic organisms. Autotrophic organisms can make its own food. Within their body. An example is plants. The process by which plants produce their own food is called photosynthesis. Plants use carbon dioxide from air, soil water, and sunlight to produce food. That is glucose. In this process, oxygen gas is produced as a byproduct and released to the atmosphere. Heterotrophic organisms are organisms that cannot prepare their own food within their body and depend upon other organisms for nutrition. Under the topic movements, let's understand about the locomotion. It is the movement from one place to another place. Locomotion methods or modes of locomotion are swimming, running, crawling, flying, and walking. What is the purpose of locomotion? Why do animals move from one place to another? That is to find food, to find shelter, and for defense. Some animals cannot move from one place to another, but they show different movements. Sea anemone and coral polyps, who live in sea, show such type of movements. A plant, which shows sleeping movement after a touch is mimosa. Plants which show sleeping movements in the evening are albicea, says Benia, and tamarind. When a plant is kept on a windowsill, after some days, the stem of the plant bends towards the sunlight. This too is a movement of a plant. Now let's discuss about the respiration. Respiration is the reaction between glucose from food and oxygen in the air you breathe. This process produces energy. During respiration, oxygen is used and carbon dioxide is released. Oxygen is taken in by inhaling. Carbon dioxide is released by exhaling. The chest moves up and down because of inhaling and exhaling. These movements are called respiratory movements. Plants to breathe, but they do not show respiratory movements as animals. To find out whether exhaled air contains carbon dioxide, let's do a simple experiment. For that you need a test tube, a straw, and colorless calcium hydroxide solution. And colorless calcium hydroxide solution into the test tube. Calcium hydroxide is also known as lime water. Then, bubble the exhaled air into the test tube as shown in the figure. You can observe colorless calcium hydroxide turns to milky white color. Now let's discuss about reproduction. A matured living being producing new members of the same species is known as reproduction. It is a biological process through which living organisms produce offsprings similar to them. 
Reproduction ensures the continuity of various species on the earth. In the absence of reproduction, the species will not be able to exist for a long time and may soon get extinct. Now, let's discuss about the diversity of plants. For easy understanding, we divide the plants based on below given features. Based on the nature of plants, based on morphological features and based on habitat, environment. Based on the nature of plants, they can be categorized as plants, trees, shrubs and creepers. Morphological. Features such as roots, stem, leaves, flowers, shape, size and color of fruits and seeds also used as a method of categorization. Plants grow not only on the terrestrial environments but also, on, aquatic, coastal and mangrove environments. When we discuss about the diversity of animals, we can classify them based on the below categories. Based on living environment. Based on the feeding mechanism. Based on the type of food. Based on external characteristics. Based on the mode of locomotion. So finally we can differentiate between plants and animals. This table is based on what we learned in this lesson. Remember, chlorophyll is the green color pigment in plants which helps in photosynthesis. Name a method that can be used to classify and identify organisms. Answer is dichotomous key. Categorization of organisms, using the presence or absence of a characteristic feature, is known as a dichotomous key. It is very easy to use. Dichotomous keys, too. Classify and identify. Organisms.